Hello everyone. Welcome to Remote Sensing and GIS for Rural Development, NPTEL lecture. This is week eight, lecture three. In this week, we have been looking at land use land cover, how it is related to rural development, and what are the data needs for doing a good land use land cover map. We have defined what is land use land cover, specifically what is land use and what is land cover. Then we merged it into one word as LULC. And then we added a change word. So LULC is there and then LULC change between two time periods. We also noted that there is a lot of data issues in mapping LULC. And for that, we are going to devote the next two lectures on data sources, data access, and how you could bring data from multiple sources into resource map. So let's start with the first example. We have ISRO's resources for LULC. And as you could see, there is a very detailed woven portal looking at the land use land cover with multiple attributes, roads, houses, buildings, airports, infrastructure, etc. And there is also another portal within the Bhuvan which showcases the agricultural rural aspect. As I said, we cannot neglect rural and urban as separate entities. The demand in urban is taken up by rural areas and when the urban system increases, the rural regions feel the pinch or they are impacted. For them to flourish and sustainably develop, the urban systems also have to be checked. So we will now look at multiple resources. As I said, there are multiple hierarchies in ISRO. That is ISRO, this is SPAC, State uh, Space Air Agencies. And then there is NRSC, National Remote Sensing Center. And then there is subdivisions. Just for the state, there are multiple ISRO products. ISRO works with multiple software agencies to collect data and map it. And there is the ready-made Bhuvan data, which is sometimes made with um, ISRO data and other satellite data like NASA, MODIS, etc. And some products are given. So we're going to look at the access to these data. But first, let's look at the tutorial on how to access it. For this, we will go to this website. So allow me to share the screen on the Bhuvan Wiki page where how you can access thematic maps, how you can go into learning to use these different data sets will be showcased. So now I am opening the data set page. Okay, so the link I've clicked and this comes up. And what you could see is it is like a book with a user guide on thematic maps. Okay, so you can click on the thematic data URL, which opens out a specific portal, which will come uh, after this going through this uh, tutorial part. Okay. So um, it turns about the URL is this, and you can have multiple mapping systems. 
It is provided in Bhuvan. It can be used for liniments, flood hazard, flood annual erosions, etc. Our uh, need is this part. You can see that land use land cover data is the first, very, very dominant part in rural development, urban development, etc. And that is why I am using it here uh, in this uh, lecture series as one week. We may spill over in the next week where we may have a hands-on tutorial on using uh, downloaded data for land use land cover. You can open and access these layers using WMS service through various clients like open layers, QGIS, ArcGIS. Uh, WMS service, you can just Google it through YouTube um, uh, and it will open out ISRO's web page on how to use the WMS service. Again, it's apart from uh, the um, lecture content. We're not here to give one specific data set and how it interacts in GIS, but that is what WMS is. Uh, we'll just focus on the data access, data download, which we will do in a hands-on session. We will use uh, NASA's data because it is more appropriate and more relevant in terms of time and space. Uh, and you will find that even the Bhuvan data houses NASA data. It is not made with ISRO's data. Uh, we will find it pretty soon. So these services are linked to this website. Um, it's good to use the best service available. It is free, open source. So what uh, NASA's data does is it, it mixes with the ISRO data and comes as a bigger product. So uh, it's always good to use the best service available. Yes, we are here to use more Indian products, but we should also understand that we should use the best service available for the Indian public um, so that they manage the land and other resources well. Uh, so uh, coming back, we will look into what um, the data are there. There is land use land cover. If you click this, it's going to be the same um, uh, thematic region, just two links uh, given for the same part. So WMS service is there, and then there's a step-to-step -step guide on how to download the data. Uh, if you just go to the Bhuvan Geo, uh, uh, Geographical Indications, GI of India, or just the Bhuvan website, you can also click on thematic services. I've given the link, but let's let's search it for uh, ourselves so that in the new course of time, if the link doesn't work, uh, you can just still go ahead. So just type Bhuvan. Uh, the first thing uh, which comes on Bhuvan is this. Um, the web page opens as entire data feed. So if you look at this Wikipedia page, this page is different than the current page. Why? Because the page has been updated. The schema is same, but it has been updated with new new uh, buttons. So you can see all these different layers. And if you come down, you can see that there is thematic layers. Here it is. So you click thematic layers, and this web page comes up. So even if the link doesn't work, all the uh, methodologies I've shown will bring you to the same uh, web page where you have the thematic layers. So I'm just going to close all the other layers. Okay. And just maybe uh, open one layer just for our sake. And let's see how it does. So we open the thematic layer and then you can search option to select the theme, what type of data you want. Uh, and then you can do some statistics uh, based approach to see uh, how the data differs uh, for a particular region. Um, uh, click on statistics option to see the land use land cover in each category. Uh, you can also click on analysis option for drawing an area of interest and then doing a quick analysis. All these data can be downloaded as an image or as a table CSV file with the results. So you don't have to do this in GIS. So whatever I'm going to show uh, took nearly a master's thesis to do, but now with just a click of a button, you'll be um, doing this in, in uh, the class. So I will be showing all these um, uh, resources on how to use it. Click on the metadata option to read the data about the data. And then the web service URL um, so that you can call this uh, into GIS. So the example QGIS, but you can just click, copy this, open in QGIS, it will quickly open. Overlay option in, uh, to uh, put other data within the Bhuvan surface into your own surface, uh, and then print option to print the map which you see. 
So we are going to see the, these things. And so before that, there's a lot of other tags that you can see. Uh, video tutorials, as I said, if you click on the video tutorials link, uh, you could see how to download uh, the satellite data, uh, how to add Bhuvan WMS layer in QGIS. You can see here that specifically QGIS is given uh, because it is open source and everyone should have access. So what we use in this current lecture is also QGIS. So we are using what all industries use. We are using uh, what all um, people use for um, the uh, software QGIS open source. So you can go through this lecture, which has been given uh, in uh, the ISRO platform. As I said, some, day, some lectures are already linked to the uh, lectures uh, within the QGIS uh, uh, platform in ISRO. Uh, I think that you can use. So here you can see that web service is given. You can open it. It will directly open in your QGIS web service uh, location. You will generate it. You will go here and then you will uh, put it into your QGIS uh, software. Uh, and then it says add WMS service. You put in the layers. It will just open out. Um, and come up in QGIS software. Uh, I don't want to redo this entire exercise, uh, but it works. And you can see clearly that um, they are uh, showing how the layer works and gets out of So here it's getting populated uh, and you can uh, visualize it. They have used uh, here ArcGIS in this, in, in this example. So this is an ArcGIS. Uh, QGIS is uh, used much, much better because it is free and open source. So I'll come back, uh, even though it says add in QGIS, you can see that it is RGIS, the link they've given, but it's fine. We will do a quick uh, analysis uh, using uh, QGIS in this lecture series. So all the other tutorials and other things are there. Uh, you can see how you can register uh, on this portal. Um, you can see, for example, here. So you can see how you can register and what data is needed. It is uh, secure as per their comments. Uh, you can have an account. Uh, th then there's free satellite data. Uh, as I said, the DEM that we had in the lecture seven, uh, we had around one arc second, approximately equal to 32 uh, meters per pixel. Um, so that is within the equatorial region. We said 30 degrees, 30 meters, et cetera. So that is almost the same. Um, and then we have Kato DEM, Katosat 1 DEM version 1.1 R1, uh, which is also uh, very good uh, in Indian regions. Uh, then the version 2, version 3, uh, and then there is an IMS hyperspectral image, 17 bands um, uh, for hyperspectral image, uh, which is more on land use, land cover, and others, other resources. Here we have uh, the resource set, which is uh, also giving you the land use, land cover. If you remember that in the previous lecture, we had this is being used for LULC preparation maps by the ISRO, ISRO agency, and that is at 56 meters. So now here's the question. If you have an open source data, which is at 30 by 30 meter resolution, which is good enough for uh, an Indian region, you will definitely use it. The ortho is uh, also good, uh, the list uh, three, which is at 24 meters, but the data is only available until May 2019. Um, uh, and it comes twice, uh, two times a year at 15, uh, um, uh, 15 uh, minutes. So you have all these data, which is freely uh, uh, given, last updated one year ago. So now let's come back to the thematic uh, our uh, slides where we are going to cover what we are going to cover. So the tutorial has been explained. Uh, let me, yes, the, the slide has come up. Uh, the tutorial has been explained. We hope that uh, the tutorial is, is helpful for you. Now we're going to look at what the thematic area is going to cover. I'm going to select UP as the region, Uttar Pradesh. Why? Uh, because um, uh, UP has the highest number of villages. Um, so this, this uh, uh, link will take us to the web page uh, for uh, the thematic services, which is also the same, which was given in the wiki page. Uh, but what we will be doing is we will see, take case study as UP as an example. Why UP? Because UP has the highest number of rural population and villages. Um, uh, again, this course is for rural development. So let's take a rural entity uh, as our data set for the uh, tutorial. Then we'll be doing these steps. 
we hope we could cover most of it in one lecture. But we can also trickle this to the next lecture, which is the fourth lecture of the eighth week. Um, and uh, because this is very important to understand each and every tab uh, and how it works. So I'll patiently go through this with you. I'll explain in detail how this can be helpful. Downloading, you can just look at the YouTube tutorials uh, from ISRO's webpage uh, on downloading. But man maneuvering and linking this to rural development is the goal of this course. So uh, as we suggested, let's go back to this uh, slide. Okay, so the thematic uh, area is going to be showcased. To share. Okay, so let me close this. And now the thematic area has come. Uh, you can see the boundaries are clear. Uh, entire India is there. Um, and uh, we can go zoom in to this up, uh, particular level. So let's uh, look into all these uh, links. So you can print the map, add uh, WMS layer, uh, updates some things, and then log in. Um, I will not log in for now. Uh, if needed, we can log in when we download the data. Okay, so normally you can keep it here so that we can see the entire uh, resolution of India. Uh, I can double click to zoom in. Uh, we'll keep it like this uh, so that we all can see what um, region that we're going to work on. So in the search box, the first is select team. If you click this, there's multiple thematic layers that have been made of this. Uh, yes, urban sprawl. What does urban sprawl means? How does the urban area increase? Okay, uh, let's just click uh, one urban sprawl um, and then select uh, some states. You not all states are there. Uh, let's say Maharashtra and then view. This kind of a um, uh, land use land cover, but basically base layer is 2011 12. So this is 2011 12. You can see how Mumbai. Um, uh, region is the red color means the urban area. But if you overlay this with 2005, 2006, uh, you could see that um, I'm zooming out. Uh, so, so, so some layers are uh, coming out as uh, pale, which means uh, there has been uh, initially the area was here, but now it's expanded here in 2012. So now if you increase this and then move it. Uh, across you could see that here uh, yeah this this example is good um you could see that uh, initially uh, in 2011 2012 this is the urban sprawl uh, and if you click this part then you can see that the light red is 2005 2006 but now it has increased when urban area increases as i said it consumes rural or peri rural peri urban regions um, it consumes the resources that were promised for rural regions, uh, and there is an imbalance. So to document that, it is important to do land use land cover. So let's go back to our uh, initial um, uh, theme that we wanted to work on. So I'm just going to refresh it. We have the India slide again. You go here. So there is water bodies, again, part of your land use land cover. Flood, annual flood hazard, these are just basic uh, flood uh, analysis for a particular year. It's not full in term. Uh, lineament is a geological uh, fractures and lines where they are present in India. It basically maps the earthquake prone zones. Uh, geomorphology is, uh, as the name suggests, a lot of geology and the morphology of the rivers. Uh, glacial lakes, wet, uh, wet water bodies, again, water bodies, uh, wasteland, where land has not been cultivated, a uh, kind of barren land, urban land use, etc. Land degradation, where how and, and how far the land has been degraded. Uh, let's look at 2015 just quickly. You could see um, uh, only some states are there, but we can see Uttar Pradesh. And you can see here as the legend uh, is here. So legend is just the color and what the color represents. You see that water erosion happens um, uh, a lot. Water logging happens a lot because the Ganges flows through uh, this region. Uh, less glacial uh, and some data is not complete. So you can see here there's data gaps and stuff. Uh, but the methodology, if you look at the technical document, it is the same that you can apply uh, for using any other data. So we'll try to do a quick uh, um, analysis of a NASA data for you so that you can uh, download and uh, do this exercise on your own. 
as I said, there is land degradation, but our um, course for this this week is land use land cover. So you could see that there is a 50K, 50,000. Uh, so one is to 50,000. That is how you should say. Uh, so one unit on the map is equal to 50,000 units on the ground. So one centimeter is equal to 50,000 centimeters. Likewise, one feet is equal to 50,000 feet. So there is a very uh, fine resolution is one is to 50,000. And then we have a 250K. So one is to 250K, which is not as uh, fine resolution as the previous one. Uh, there is a 10K, which is the highest, but uh, it is urban, not um, uh, rural uh, areas. So when you do land is land cover, it is entire. So they have done three uh, years. We have 2005, 2006, 2011, 2012, 2015, 2016. So three years have been mapped. Uh, but still, as I said, 2016 is the latest data available. Today's date is uh, 23 March, uh, and that is a seven-year graph. Uh, so how come? Uh, how can we use a seven-year data for um, a current scenario is not clear. Uh, but for sure, you can use the previous uh, and then map the current to see how it works. Uh, we will be showcasing that part. How do you current take a current data and then do a quick land use land cover? Uh, however, this requires a lot of manpower, uh, time, and cost. Uh, we will do the basic requirement, which is free and quick. Uh, it is not as good as these maps that have been populated, uh, and that is why it takes time. So, but seven years is too long to take. Maybe a year time should have been taken to take the ground points across India, because uh, all the institutes can cover. Uh, the, there is a, a tremendous locations of uh, the uh, ISRO's database centers across India, they can pitch in the data uh, and uh, can work on this. Okay, so let's go back to uh, what we want to see. So I have uh, uh, looked into the uh, Uttar Pradesh and you could see that the, the boundaries are very accurate in these uh, maps because these are, uh, as per the government rules and laws, we should also use these uh, boundaries. So the first we're going to see is the land use land cover, let's say 2005, 2006. As I said, I'm going to check UP, so Uttar Pradesh, and click view. So beautifully, the map comes up. Um, you could see that, uh, try to minimize it a little bit so that you can see the entire UP. Um, and there are a lot of base layers, okay? You can zoom into a, one particular um, location. Um, I've been to Lucknow, as I said, the last week I was there uh, for a particular conference. Uh, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, you could see here that it doesn't populate the current legend. The legend is stuck, so you'll have to refresh it. So this happens, so don't get um, concerned. Uh, it's just the map did not update. Uh, so don't worry about it. Again, click, UV, and then view. Beautiful. Now the uh, legend has been updated. You can see that agricultural cropland is what we want to see. And as I said, let's look at uh, Lucknow. Lucknow is still a major hub, but still you can see a lot of agricultural cropland. Agricultural cropland is given as uh, yellow, uh, and you could see the different classes. So now come back to the lesson that we have seen. Um, the classification is this is the classification. The pixel has been classified. Each pixel inside each pixel, each grid, what is the dominant land use land cover? If it is 50% uh, urban, 50% rural, it's sticky, but never it comes like that. It will be not a straight 50%. It will be like 50.12% uh, and 49.88% uh, um, uh, 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 is your rural. So now we have a slight improvement or slight uh, benefit for the urban. So the data goes for urban uh, and the pixel is colored red. But if the agriculture is there, for example, 60% and 40%, uh, or even 51%, 49%, 51% rural, 49% urban, then it becomes yellow. So now you could see that uh, built up urban is red, uh, built up rural is uh, darker red, which is on this part. So this part is uh, darker red. You can see that that is a rural area, but built up. Um, and then I'm just a little bit outside Lucknow, but yeah, here's now all these areas. Uh, the red part is the city in 2005-2006. Uh, built up mining is not there. Agricultural land, crop land, plantations, all these are plantations and agricultural land. Uh, there's fallow land, forest deciduous. There's not much forest here, uh, but there's a lot of pink color. And what does pink color give? This barren land, wasteland, culture, or scrub land, etc. 
Uh, it's type of barren lands. It is a lot of them are there. There are small wetlands here. So some part of the land has a lot of wetlands uh, and then water bodies, blue color for water bodies. So the basics have been mapped. Um, and um, as I said, you can, you can go as the uh, district boundary uh, or you can just say select and then uh, remove. It gets removed. Uh, you can just go back up and down and then say uh, view. Now it views, it gets loading. You can see that this is the overall. Uh, and in the overall, you see forest on the top, the Himalayan regions, uh, the Ganges flowing, which is big, big water bodies. Um, in, the, in the lower part, you will see a lot of barren wasteland, etc. Land has not been used well. Uh, along the along the Ganges, along the river channels, uh, these are prime land for agriculture. You see a lot of agricultural activities. So uh, on a whole, you do see that um, these lands have more agriculture. It, it relates to the uh, statistics I just show, shared as per census data. UP has the highest number of rural population and villages. So definitely there'll be a lot of agricultural activities. And so we also have a lot of wasteland and barren land and then some forests in the bottom, uh, forests on the top and a lot of uh, urbanization, these hotspots. So these are hotspots. Uh, let's take some other Bareilly um, can be taken. Uh, I've worked in Bareilly, so let's zoom in uh, and you can see some city and then most of it is the Ganges region. Uh, along the Ganges, there has been a lot of uh, waste uh, shrublands, uh, barren, unculturable wasteland, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The colors are not as perfect, uh, but you see a lot of red dots. The red dots, the, the maroon kind of red, is the built-up rural areas, a lot of rural areas, uh, and then this is the Bairali city. Very, very nice, posh city, very small, but still uh, not as big as Lucknow, uh, but still is good. Okay, so this is how you will access uh, the land use land cover. You can look at the technical document. Uh, as promised, let us go and see what is the data uh, source that has been used. Uh, you see that a projection of land use land cover, one is to 50,000 scale. Uh, metadata is always important. It is your duty to read through these before using the data because uh, anyone can question you what is the source of the data. You can say ISRO is the source, but still ISRO's what? is the question and this is the list three data linear imaging self-scanning sensor three uh, it has good high resolution compared to the previous ones um, you can see that it has mapped all these uh, different uh, water bodies and um, land use land cover okay and they give you what does it mean so as i said uh, in here you say the two the legends are here and what the, what constitutes when they say what is built up urban you can come here and say what is built up urban is it's a mix of public school, public, semi-public, communication centers, uh, industries, recreational, ash, dump, uh, reclaimed land, which is area. For example, reclaimed land is what uh, the Bandra Kurla complex is in Mumbai. Uh, it's a beautiful land, but it's all reclaimed from the ocean. They put in a lot of uh, soil and gravel to claim the land. So that is all called as built-up area. And then within the built-up, there is rural, just rural area within the rural uh, region. If it is built-up, it is called built-up rural and then built-up mining. So we don't have any mining, but we have three built-ups. And that is what you see here, built-up and then three descriptions. Then you have agriculture cropland. It constitutes curry, rabi, uh, zaid, two crop uh, seasons or more than two crop plantation includes plantation, which is rubber, tea, et cetera, um, um, or, or uh, even um, uh, banana. Uh, and then you have agriculture, horticultural, et cetera. All these come under plantation. Fallow is current and long fallow, current shifting uh, cultivation, all comes under agriculture. So you can see here, there is agriculture crop, agriculture plantation, agriculture fallow. There is a comma. So there is a first description and then a second description, and it is separated by a comma. And then there's grass, grazing, barren. I, I would recommend you to uh, go through these. Uh, and it, as I said, it uses the FAO scenarios. Um, and we have used the same uh, description um, in our uh, class. You would have seen that land cover is defined as observed physical features on the Earth's surface. I've added bio because there is a lot of bio also in it, which is forest cover, um, uh, crop cover, all these things. Okay, And they're given detailed uh, description of each bullet point, what it means, what is fallow, what is forest, 
So let's look at uh, agriculture, for example. We have agriculture. These are the land primarily used for farming, production of food, fiber, and other commercial horticulture crops in India. Uh, it constitutes of cropland, plantations, and fallow. Um, cropland um, uh, areas appear bright red in the red spectrum. Uh, they are widely distrib distributed in different terrains, prominently appear in the irrigated and non-irrigated areas. Uh, it includes curry, rabi, zaid crops. Zaid is mostly the winter crops, uh, along with areas under double or triple crops. So this is the definition of agricultural cropland. Okay, so then you have salt infected, uh, barren land, etc. What is the year? Uh, when we downloaded, we did notice that it was 2005, 2006. So now it says resource and data from list three sensor of three sensors pertaining to 2005, 2006 are used. Uh, the three seasons are monsoon, uh, Rabi, and Zaid. Uh, Karif is the time. So August to October is your Karif, the rainy season. Um, Rabi to is, uh, is your December to March. Uh, which is mostly your winter crops and your pre-summer crops. Uh, Zayin is your peak summer crops. In this, uh, in some regions, it is called the winter crop. Here, they use it as the summer crop. Okay, suggested use you can use it for watershed management, agricultural productivity, and improvement, which is what the rural development uh, scenario we are looking at. Uh, how do you increase agricultural productivity? How do you map regions where agricultural productivity is needed? And then your energy budgets, hydrological budgets, etc. There's some disclaimer um, and then data, etc. Partner institutions, as I said, they work with other regions. So UP looks like UP Space Center was uh, uh, very, very helpful. Uh, and then so maybe UP is a good section to look at. Uh, and then the project directors, personnel, etc. Citations, if you use the data, you could cite this uh, NRSC. Uh, ISRO is also pretty good to cite. They have their own citations of uh, what is land use land classification. They've used the manuals on FAO. So good thing that we are also using the FAO uh, citations in our uh, lecture series. So we are currently on track uh, and we use uh, these technologies also. So with this, uh, I think the metadata is clear. You can zoom out, zoom in uh, using your uh, mouse uh, and you can use different locations also. So let's look at 10 years uh, difference. So I'm just going to go UP um, and then let's say view. So just for 2015-2016, uh, you have a map and statistics. You can download both or read both. Uh, we use Byrelli. So let's go to Byrelli again and Byrelli comes up. Uh, you can see the same uh, legend is used. Uh, however, the data is different because we had uh, two different um, um, uh, years. You can move the screen up and down uh, if you don't want to see this part, uh, but then you can also use it. Okay. So uh, the technical document uh, for 2015-2016 is uh, they have used, uh, let's see what data they have used. Uh, they have used um, ISRO's uh, data cycle. Uh, 55, 54 classes of land use land cover has been done. Uh, the years that have been used, uh, what are the legends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, we can also see that it has used the resource set, a project land is land cover. It is using a multi source resource set, uh, linear self scanning, list three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and um, they also use uh, other uh, ISRO satellite data products. Okay. And the same uh, uh, documentation has been given. Uh, here they are given different updated uh, data products um, and uh, the uh, previous um, citations have been used. This is a 2019 citation, so it is approximately three years old, uh, but the data was for 2015, 2016. Okay, so let's stop here. Uh, we have looked at, uh, okay, let's look one more quickly and uh, select UP, view, Technical document is the same. And then we have map. Uh, map, you can download the map. If you click the map, quickly the map comes up with all the uh, land use land cover um, and uh, data source, resource set. So this is the metadata of the data. Uh, they have taken three seasons, 11, 2012, 20, 2012. So 2011 to 2012 uh, was used to make this map. 
uh, and uh, they have published it in 2016, 2017. So you can zoom in and zoom out uh, and then use this for your studies. You can georeference this map uh, because you know where Bayerili is. You can click a point in Bayerili, the center of Bayerili, take the geo GCPs, the ground control points, uh, and then use it in your study area. Okay. For some reason, uh, statistics also can be looked at. Um, so basically gives you the statistics of uh, the percentage of land uh, cover and use, et cetera. Uh, how much land is in cropland, total land area and square kilometers has been given in statistics. Comparisons is not done yet, uh, but we can definitely do it in the next uh, lecture series. So let's uh, look at in detail the next ones. As I said, in 2005, 2006, if you go to uh, Uttar Pradesh, you do not see the map and statistics. It is not readily available. You will have to download and put it in the map, uh, but, the, but the other reasons do have. So with this, I stop here. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.